Mike check one two one two. Hey there, welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. My name is Tochuku, aka Toch. So this is actually my first video where I have my camera turned on, and somehow that makes me feel inclined to talk a bit about myself as well as what I plan to do on this channel. So in case you haven't noticed already, and I'm sure you will at some point, but being in front of a camera makes me feel very, very very uncomfortable. So I have a really bad anxiety disorder, uh, which makes it hard to do things like this. But even with that, I'm trying not to let it prevent me from doing things that I think are interesting. But that being said, keep in mind, uh, it, it, it'll take a while for me to get, you know, comfortable uh, doing this. And while that's happening, you know, expect to see or don't be surprised rather if you see, you know, me trying out a few different personas until, you know, I get to a point where either I find one that works for me or I'm able to just be natural, whatever natural means, uh, in front of the camera. Either way, it'll be a process. Uh, so just giving you a heads up. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, uh, a little bit about my background. So I'm a computer science student at the University of Maryland, and I also work a part-time job as a tech lead at a startup company called HiveHub. And most of the development I've done over the years is in the domain of JavaScript. Um, I've been writing JavaScript code since about 2015. So quite some time now. So now on to what I intend to do with this channel. So the best way I can describe it, or the most interesting way I can describe it, is like Marquez Brownlee, if you guys know who that is. But rather than, you know, gadgets and tech stuff, I want to do code modules and libraries, mostly in the JavaScript ecosystem. So there's a ton of different APIs, libraries, and platforms in the JavaScript ecosystem alone. So I want to go through as many as I can and, you know, leave uh, reviews for each one. So these reviews are going to be based on five different criteria, uh, the first of which is going to be the documentation. So I'll just be checking to see how well made the documentation is, as well as how easy it is to follow. So the second criteria is going to be measured using a few different things. And the name of the criteria is popularity. That's the second criteria, second, not one. But anyways, it'll be measured uh, using a few different things. Uh, first of which is the GitHub page, uh, just seeing how many stars it has, how many package downloads it has, um, stuff like that. But it'll also be measured by how easily you can find results to errors when you Google them. The third criteria is going to be the learning curve. And this will just basically be how long or rather how easy or hard it is to learn how to use the tool. So the fourth criteria is setup, and this is just basically uh, how long it takes from when you either download the package in the case of a package, or let's say sign up for the platform in the case of a platform. So how long it takes from that till when you can actually start being productive with the tool or service. So last and arguably maybe even the most important one, especially if you're a college kid, is pricing. Uh, basically, you shouldn't have to break the bank in order to build cool stuff. And that's what this criteria is going to be based on, how, you know, cost effective the tool or the service is. So now that all that's out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right into the first service that I'm going to be reviewing. It's a fancy little tool called Superbase. And no, I'm not talking about the Nicki Minaj song. And yes, I know just how horrible that joke was. <laughs> Without further ado, I'm going to shrink myself now and let's uh, get right into it. So in case you've never heard of them, it's all right. I recently found out about them myself uh, when I saw an article about how they had recently raised six million uh, for their service. So basically what they do is they call themselves or they are an open source alternative to Firebase. And right there you can see, or you can, if you know what Firebase is, you can kind of guess what they do. I'm just kind of surprised that, you know, for a small startup company um, or an open source project that they're, you know, going after one of the biggest players in the game right from the get go. So that instantly caught my attention. So basically what they do is they're a backend service. Um, so it basically just uh, allows people to, or developers to build apps uh, more easily. And some of the features they offer are authentication, a database, storage, for files as well as cloud functions which is basically just an environment where you can you know run server applications so firebase offers all of these features already but there are two big differences between superbase or super base that's how it's pronounced no er 
uh, and Firebase, first of which being Superbase is an open source project, whereas Firebase is owned by Google. And the database that they use is based on Postgres SQL versus Firebase, which has Firestore, which is based on a NoSQL document style database. So I created a sample application to test out its authentication as well as database feature, um, but I won't be going into too much detail about the application because this technically isn't a tutorial video, um, but I will leave a link to it on my GitHub in case you might be curious to see what it looks like. So let's start off with the authentication. So it offers, you know, the basic features you would expect, you know, being able to create a user, being able to log the user in and also being able to log them out. And it also offers password reset via email as well as um, email, verif email verification also via email. So next up is the database. Like I said earlier, it's a Postgres SQL database. Uh, but the, in the interesting thing about this one is that it offers real time updates just like uh, Firebase does. So whenever, you know, a new document is created or it's updated or deleted, it has callbacks that notify you of these events. So before we get into the review, I have a few issues um, that I want to address. The first one is a bit of a nitpick, but um, if you're going to come for, you know, the biggest player in the game, or at least one of the biggest players in the game, you know, you better come hard, right? So the first one is that the real time updates, it takes a bit more code that you as the developer have to do on the front end to get it to work the same as how, you know, Firebase works out of the box, right? And again, this is not, you know, the most terrible thing to do but you know like i said you know they're they're going for the king right they have to come strong right so the second complaint is the function that checks or rather that lets you listen for changes to the user's authentication status basically the function doesn't fire initially on the first page load right so there's not a very good way of knowing um, whether or not the user is logged in as soon as the page loads, it's not, you know, very reliable. So what I ended up having to do was I created a timeout for like, uh, 300 milliseconds. And then I checked again, you know, um, to see whether or not there was a user token in the storage. And then I set that in the application. And those are all my complaints. Uh, I'm not a very hard man to please, uh, evidently. But now let's jump right into the review. Um, so the first, like I said, is going to be the documentation. So these reviews are going to be on a scale of five, if I didn't mention that already. So the documentation gets a four. It's pretty solid. You know, the website looks pretty nice. There is nothing to complain about. Um, it explains most of the things. Well, not most of the things. Everything that's on there, you know, it's explained in a way that's clear. Um, so it gets a four for documentation. The popularity, on the other hand, gets a very unflattering one, numero uno. Uh, and to be honest, it's, it's really not its fault. You know, it's a new product. Like I said, I only, I only first heard of it like two weeks ago. But yeah, there's not a lot of stars on GitHub, uh, not a lot of, you know, people that are using it. So as for the learning curve, this one gets a four out of five. Uh, like I said, you know, um, it's really not that bad to learn. The documentation explains things pretty well. Um, and also, you know, the authentication, um, pretty straightforward and the database is based on SQL. And even though I'm not, I'm certainly no SQL expert, I was still able to, you know, do what I needed to, to create the sample application. So it doesn't have too much of a high learning curve. So on to the setup, the setup gets a five out of five. Uh, it's pretty easy to get started. You, you know, you can go from, you know, um, creating an account and downloading the client library to being productive with it, you know, like that. It's pretty fast. So now down to my favorite part and arguably the most exciting part is the pricing. Uh, so the pricing, it gets a five out of five. Uh, this is because right now it's absolutely free. Um, especially if you create an account when it's, while it's in beta, uh, you get about a year of the free tier or rather the, the base tier for free. I'm not sure how this might change in the future, but you know, right now it is what it is. And so now the question is when, if at all, should you use um, this service? Personally, I would only ever use it for very small projects, if at all. Um, it, like I said, you know, it's, it's brand new. It's very young. It, you know, probably still has a bunch of bugs that haven't been figured out yet. And it's probably not as optimized as it can be. 
So, you know, really small projects, maybe hackathon, stuff like that. But I will say, though, you know, it, it, it has a lot of promise to it. Being an open source project, um, there is a chance for it to achieve success, depending on, you know, how strongly people feel about it. Take, for example, you know, Vue.js, you know, one of the top three JavaScript frameworks, you know, it's completely an open source project, right? So this may be potentially, possibly, somehow, <laughs> might end up, you know, being um, something like that. And that's pretty much the whole video. Uh, if you made it this far, one or two things, either you're somebody that I know, a friend of mine, or your cringe tolerance is like through the roof. Regardless of which, uh, thank you for watching. Um, I intend to make a couple more, well, not a couple more, more videos like these whenever I can. I think it's, I think it'll be interesting. Hopefully um, you find it interesting or useful, hopefully, preferably useful. Uh, so thanks for watching and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.